The winter night sky is filled with some of the most magnificent and beautiful treasures of the night sky you can photograph in the universe. From some of the amazing emission nebulae in Orion and Monoceros, there is tons of bright nebulas and great targets for beginners to shoot all across the winter constellations. Arguably one of the most magnificent of these winter targets is the Great Orion Nebula in the constellation of Orion. The Orion Nebula is one of the most recognized nebulae in the night sky, and for good reason too. It's one of the brightest and one of the biggest nebulae in the night sky that you can observe with your eye. The Orion Nebula is so bright and big that it is one of the best beginner targets to first capture with your first telescope, and you can even see it through binoculars. It's such a fantastic target to shoot that I always come back to it every single year when I get the chance to. But as I'm clearly reminded by the fact, it is almost March and the winter constellations are going away. And I haven't photographed Orion yet. <laughs> hint, hint, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing tonight. Tonight I'm going to be photographing the Great Orion Nebula with this amazing Celestron CPC 1100 telescope. Hi everybody, my name is Noah and welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful, crisp, clear day here in Minnesota and the perfect time to do some astro. Tonight I'm going to be photographing the amazing Orion Nebula as I have not done this year and I really need to do this year. And tonight I'm going to be photographing with my Celestron CPC 1100 telescope. Tonight I'm going to be doing something that I have never ever tried before in this hobby and that is going to be photographing space with a super high focal length setup and I'm going to be photographing the stars at a very high magnification. Specifically tonight I'm going to be photographing the Orion Nebula core with my Celestron CPC 1100 telescope and if you remember my video I did on this telescope in the summer this telescope has a whopping 2800 millimeters of focal length which is an absolute beast of a system and will really allow me to crank in my views on the Orion Nebula. When I made my video of shooting the planet Jupiter and Saturn with this very telescope over the summer of 2021, you guys absolutely seemed to love that video and I can't thank you all enough for the incredible support that video has gotten. I'm so, so grateful I've been able to reach such a huge audience and inspire and help out so many different people in the hobby. Now up until now, I've only shot the moon and the planets with this 11 inch SCT telescope and never ever attempted to shoot nebulae or galaxies with this kind of setup. Normally for astrophotography, these SCT telescopes are exceptional for the planets and the moon because they are such a compact system but deliver so much focal length and often a large primary mirror which really can help resolve many, many details on the moon or maybe the planets. High focal length setups are amazing for the planets and the moon with this 11 inch SCT, but I really wanted to do some testing and see what was truly possible with this kind of setup with some deep space objects. Now, if you haven't already noticed, this telescope has an absolutely huge mirror at the back, which allows an amazing light gathering capability. Now the specific mirror at the back of this scope is a huge 11 inch mirror which is incredible to think about that we can use these telescopes at our own backyards to capture the amazing universe. If you don't happen to know how light is passed through an SCT type telescope such as mine, light basically enters through the front of the scope and there is a primary mirror at the back of the scope. This is the main mirror that focuses light to a secondary mirror near the front of the scope which then again is focus light through the back of the scope to wherever your camera may be. This creates massive focal lengths and it makes the whole tube a bit smaller than you may think with maybe a Newtonian or a Dobsonian type telescope. If you watched my previous video on this telescope back in the summer when I was photographing the planets with it, you may notice that this is on a slightly different setup than what was I was using earlier. 
The difference here is I've taken my OTA, that is the telescope itself, and I've taken that off the all azimuth mount and I've mounted it here on my equatorial Celestron AVX mount. All azimuth mounts are great mounts and can be used for tracking and observing, but there are a few downsides when it comes to using them for astrophotography. The way alt azimuth mounts are built is there are two gears or motors in the mount itself, one on the base and one on the fork. And these gears work together to track anything in the sky using a horizontal and vertical motion. The problem with this, however, is because the sky does not track perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical, this makes tracking an object and doing long exposure astrophotography a bit tricky. The main problem with these all azimuth mounts used for astrophotography is a problem known as field rotation. Field rotation occurs when you're taking a long exposure image with your camera on an all azimuth mount and as the mount tracks the object throughout the sky there is a bit of field rotation or image shift as the object changes position in the sky. With an equatorial mount however these mounts track the sky uh, on the north celestial pole. You point them at Polaris or the southern celestial pole and they track with the rotation of the earth and can eliminate this field rotation issue. Because I'm doing some long exposure astrophotography, I obviously had to opt for the equatorial mount. And so I deforked my Celestron CPC 1100 and I actually bought this little handy dovetail and now I can mount it to my Celestron AVX for tracking. To be honest, I was a little bit skeptical if this would even work as my AVX is a relatively beginner friendly mount and can't really handle too much load but I was actually out the previous night and through my testing, this actually worked fantastic for what I was doing. I can't believe the results coming from it. When I first went out with this rig to capture the Orion Nebula about a night ago, I'm gonna be honest, this setup does look a bit intimidating, but I'm gonna help break down each step of the process so you can understand what I'm doing tonight. Okay, so obviously the telescope I'm gonna be using is a slash around CPC 1100. I've only said it a million times. <laughs> And for the camera I'll be using tonight, that is my uh, ZWO ASI 294MC Pro, which is my cooled color astronomy camera. This camera also has the Optilung L Pro filter installed, which is a great filter to use for some broadband data under these moonless nights. For guiding tonight, I have not really a plan at all of what I'm doing and I just mounted my small 120 millimeter focal length guide scope to one of the mounting brackets of my CPC 1100. This guide scope I used for most of my other nebulae project with a smaller refractor, but I don't have any OAG system for this big telescope or any other guiding method, so it's the best I got. Anyways, this is all riding on my Celestron AVX mount, and as the AVX mount came, with its standard, I believe, 20 pound counterweight. It could not handle the weight of all of this, but I cleverly added about 15 pounds of extra dumbbell weight, which would be perfect and it seems to balance well. <laughs> all right, that's the complete setup. There really isn't much more to do until it gets a little bit darker. I'll see you guys then. Hi everyone, I'm out in the backyard. It is nighttime now and I have the scope set up pointing to the Orion Nebula in Orion. I'm currently taking 60 second exposures of the Great Orion Nebula with my ZWO ASI 294MC Pro and it's all riding on my Celestron AVX mount. It is a bit windy out here and I think that's definitely showing up in my images a little bit, some of the subs. The stars don't look completely round, but otherwise I'm very impressed with the single exposures. They are just incredible. I can't believe how well the Orion Nebula is coming through. Today's video was a bit of a shorter video, but this is really a first test or a first light for me. And I haven't experienced or experimented with this type of astrophotography before. I'm not really sure where I want to go with it, but these were the first few steps of dipping my feet into 
really high magnification astrotography with my CPC 1100. I really hope you enjoy my final image of the Great Orion Nebula at the end of the video. And until next time, stay safe, safe viewing, and as always, clear skies. Thank you.